CropHale is a data collection of localizations and locations of proteins within the cell. Now the collection itself contains four major crops that are of high importance in the societies and economy around the world. That includes rice and corn, but also more recent research species such as wheat and barley. So the aim of CropPal is to really bring together data sets from around the world. There's people all over the place making this information. If we can aggregate that and put it in one place, it helps in a variety of ways. Now, we thought maybe we need to find out by doing experiments, but in fact we found that there's an awful lot of data already out there. It's already available. It just had never been put together. So what crop power was about was saying, how do we get that information about proteins in crops, pull it all together from around the world to be, in some senses, a pal, um, a help to people who are wanting to know where things are in cells. One of the things that we found already is that the proportion of proteins, which are in particular kinds of roles, varies between these crops. So the proportion of effort that they put into protein synthesis or the proportion they might put into defense or photosynthesis varies. And so this is important in, in understanding why um, we have these major crops, why they're, they're grown in different locations, and what the economic opportunities are for different plants as the climate changes to actually cope with the future world requirements we have to feed the planet. There is a benefit to the, the scientists, but there's also a benefit to the, the industry because the, the way we look at breeding is slowly changing, so we need to have a more predictable way of breeding plants. So we don't just try a lot of different things, we want to have a targeted approach to say we have more success if we know what to target in our breeding. So by using this data, we will be able to unlock more knowledge about the uh, functions and the proteins in the plant and to develop more competitive crop plants. So I think one of the things it'll do is actually show the holes. It's not always what you want data to do. You want data to actually achieve things as well, but it will, it will do both. It will actually show ways that countries and, and research communities can be working together internationally, but it'll also show areas of investment that are required. So a lot of different kinds of people will benefit. Individual researchers will benefit because they can ask the question about one protein, where it is, if they're very interested in working on it. Biotechnology companies can actually go and gain access to the information because it's all public. We see that with the work that we've been doing on salinity and temperature responses in wheat, that the capability and information that we have actually enables us to work with uh, farmers and people who are actually doing field trials and trying to understand what's more temperature sensitive or temperature tolerant in wheat and what's more salinity tolerant in wheat, and working out what the proteins are that are responsible for that. Growing up in Western Australia, it's very difficult to escape the fact that salinity is a major problem for wheat farmers in the wheat belt. Certainly when I was a kid, we went on a primary school expedition to go and see saline soils and crops which were affected by salinity. And I suppose that affected me. It, it made me see that, that, that landowners and farmers are suffering and that, that with biochemistry and new techniques that we have here, we can really bring solutions to them to, to help help Australia succeed and help our farmers succeed.